because we always had it in mind that he's going to take it away from me, you know. <laughs> I'll haunt you if I know you sold that car. was uh, the 60s, right? It was like 65. I was still in school. Uh, over there you started at 16, you know, driving. And uh, I told my father I want to buy a car. He told me, oh, you're too young, you can't drive. You know, I said, but I need to go out or something, you know. When the, we saw the Mustang at that time, it was number one car. Stampede, a stampede of 100,000 Mustangs. Ford Mustangs. In less than four months, the Ford Mustang has become the most talked about, most exciting and fastest selling new car in over 20 years. End of 65 going to 66, because that's a 65 and a half. It's not even 66, it's a 65 and a half it's called. Yeah, we had ordered, because uh, when we bought it, first of all, I don't want no V8, I don't want no V8s. I want a six cylinder car, all right, I get a six cylinder car. I want a stick shift too. I'm, and at that time, they, they didn't come out stick shift. You know, usually they're three gears automatic. So this one, you know, we ordered it and I said, well, the only stick shift we have for gears is the Falcon, the Ford Falcon. I said, uh, they have the same engine, we'll just give you the gearbox of a uh, Falcon. I said, oh, fine, all right, you know. And now uh, we got the, that's how we got the stick shift. You don't find any like that, with the four gears like that. And I uh, said, uh, do you want the 289, the V8? I said, uh, my first, no, 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 six cylinder, six. <laughs> I know the 289 was $200 more. <laughs> At that time, 200 was, you know, was a thousand today. Yeah, was, they, they were cheap. Up to 1970, they were all under 5,000. Mustang, Camaro, Firebird, they were all under 5,000. It's not that they were expensive because I remember Volkswagen was 1600, <laughs> the, the VW. Okay. I remember that. Uh, and uh, this, this, I think it was like 2300 we bought it. So uh, we bought it, kept it in the garage there. We use it like a nice day, a nice Saturday, Sunday, you know. Uh, we'll go for a drive. And then uh, it was like a year and a half after, you know, my father said, you know, uh, I'm going to work, I'm, I'm retiring, I'm leaving. So I said, all right, you know, yeah, I'm taking the car with me. I'm not going to leave you here with the car alone. Tell me, I don't want you to drive here, you know, I'm taking the car with me. I said, all right, take it. You know, and he took it here and it became his everyday car here because he used it every day. And, I, you know, then uh, my father left, you know, when I bought a Charger. <laughs> 68, I think in May, May of 68. Uh, he came to Malta with it, yeah. That was, I think, uh, there was this Mustang and there was another one. Yeah, I, I remember, and there was a Corvette, the blue Corvette, long time ago. Those are the three cars I remember seeing them getting loaded on the boat. <laughs> yeah. You know, this year he'll be 100. <laughs> he was still alive. Because he was born in 1919, so we'll make him 100 this year. Always sending parts for him, you know. Well, my clutch is gone, oh, I need... <laughs> The wishbone here, you know, the, the bearings, uh, always sending parts, you know. In Hamroon, he went on the sidewalk, he had three cars. And I think uh, St. Andrew's going to buy a char. I think there was a ditch at one time on the side. I think he went right into it. He drove too close to the side. <laughs> and that's why he told me I need uh, wishbones. <laughs> uh, but uh, like I said, he, he, he used it every day, every day. Nine o'clock in the morning, Valletta. Used to see it parked in Floriana there every day. Used to be parked there. When I used to come here for vacation, oh, Dad, can I have the car? No, no, don't touch my car. Don't. Here, I'll give you money. Go rent the car. Don't, don't take this one. <laughs> one day it will be yours. We'll take it back again, you know? That was his baby. I didn't get the chance to drive it. Because we always had in mind that he's going to take it away from me, you know? <laughs> I said, well, once I get, you know, I'm old, you could have it back, <laughs> So I got it back. Here's the keys to the car. I told me, go and change it on your name, take it. <laughs> I'm done with it. 
I'm not sure they have my father down the car, you know, but <laughs> then again, you know, you can't hold on to everything. It's something, you know, I mean, I still remember talking about like 53, 54 years ago, these things, you know. And it's just memories, you know. Sometimes I think about it, you know, me and him, you know, go and get it and the good times we had, you know. And now I don't even drive it, now he takes it back. <laughs> I always came on holiday after I was born. You know, I always knew about the Mustang that, that Nando has, you know? And every time I see a Mustang, then back in the States when I was there, I'm like, oh, is that like Nando? I, I keep asking my dad, like, is that like his? And I started realizing, then I got to see it, you know? I'll see it either here or in his, uh, his summer place, at the garage in the summer place. Uh, just, you know, ask him if I'm allowed to, to sit in it, you know? And it's always something about it, you know? And I've been in other Mustangs, like in the States. There was just something about this one. For some reason, even when we go back to the States, you know, I'm like, I'm like I'll ask my parents, we're going to go up in the summer again, you know, not see my cousin, not see my family members, my extended family. It's mostly to see the Mustang again, you know. It's like I became obsessed from a little, such a young age about that car. I told everyone in the family, like, I don't care what happens. You guys can sell anything, I don't care, you know. I would sell anything if I really needed to. If I was in dire straits, I will not touch that car. I'm trying to pass that info to my son also. So if he's seeing this later on, I'll haunt you if I know you sold that car. 96 is exactly, that is, I remember the, clearly the year when we took it out of the garage after it was, it was here for a while. It was in the garage for a while, not being used. Obviously wasn't having, I didn't have my license yet, but I was already into cars like crazy, you know? There was four guys, we couldn't move it on neutral out of the garage, because we had to drag it out, wouldn't start. We pulled it with, with Janus minibus. Yes. I have a photo somewhere of that day when we first washed it after years of being yeah. in that garage, not moved. But we didn't take a photo before. We, we got it back in 96 in, you know, it was in okay condition, but obviously it needed work. It was used every day here since like 68. It was just baked with the sun. The interior was baked, you know, everything from light blue was starting to to look green. That was one of my first enjoyable memories then of the car as, as I'm trying to keep it now, you know, was us dismantling it. Cause I, after years of coming over and seeing, you know, there's another dent in there, there's another scratch there, you know. Now I'm like, all right, now I know that it's not gonna be used every day. So we can finally take it apart. You know, we'd have an outdated magazine. I have to write a letter to get the new one. Cause I'd have like three year old price lists. And then we just started making a list and I just started adding everything. My father was like, let's see what we get fixed here. I'm like, no, bumpers. They've all been dented. We're not, you know, they're pitted, brand new bumpers. So whatever we could change aesthetically that can make it, whatever we kept original, we kept original. Steering wheel is still original. Air conditioning unit is still original. There's a lot of things still original to that car. The hubcaps are still original. So many other things. The original radio is still in it. Re still using the original keys. I didn't have any cut, which I actually should. I used the copies, come to think of it, but I'm still using the original keys. I mean, it still only has 80,000 miles when you consider. My daily driven car is only five years old and has more than that. During the restoration phase, we changed, like I said, we kept whatever we could, but whatever really just would be more cost effective and would just look nicer, we just have it, had it changed, such as like bumpers, quarter panels, because of some rust having to eat out. But, um, most of the cars, I mean, it's still pretty much original, I mean, when you come to think of it. I mean, anything that I took off during the restoration that we, we, we didn't throw out, though. Now it's at the point where I could say it's 98% where I want it to be, though it's almost a lie. You know, disc brakes are really tempting right now. <laughs> On a car that size, shoes just ain't cutting it anymore, you know. The old, the old disc brake, uh, I mean, the old drum brakes are just a bit of a... They give you a little white knuckle boost, you know? Because you're coming up to around you, right? Like, will it stop? Will it just slow down? But otherwise, aesthetically, recently, it's exactly where I want it to be. It's exactly how I always envisaged it, even all these years. But, no, I mean, it's my baby, you know? I mean, I'm, my son knows that I love it, you know? Everyone who knows me knows that I that I really genuinely love that car, but it goes deeper than just I love it because 
look how much I put into it or look how or whatever or people want to take photos. I really don't care about that. I generally love it because of the story of it and because it's a one owner car and it's being passed on from generation to generation and I want to do it now to my son. So I already instilled, not fear, but I instilled that, you know, that love from when he was young. You know, he's always helping me wash it. He's helping me, you know, he'll ask me if we're going to take it out for a nice day, you know. I'm like, yeah, you know, I mean, he doesn't care about any other car that we go in, but that one, yes. So that's, my job is already being done in a way. So I'm glad about that. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to lie, I've had stupid offers on that car. I mean, stupid offers. It wasn't even, uh, I didn't even think about it, I didn't even hesitate. It was outright, you know, I smiled because I knew where the conversation was going and I was just prepared for no. Guy came up to me and gave me his checkbook with an open check and he said, write a number. I just finished having my coffee, I just closed the checkbook, I told him, I don't care if I fill in all your checks in that checkbook, not for sale, never. I mean, that's when I knew how much is, it's not just a car that, you know, oh, I like, or I really love it. I told my family, they're like, why didn't you? They're like, what's, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you know? <laughs> that goes to show you how much I love it, I guess. Those are my kind of wheels for sure. <laughs>